Is that a hot dog in a can? It sure is. It sure is. That sure is a hot dog in a can. Yeah, I don't know either. Some someone recommended this video. <laughs> someone recommended this video. What other countries are told is American? So for American. For American. Fox? Fork? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's French. I think it's for. I don't think you pronounce the X. Either way, why isn't it can? I don't know. We shall figure this out. Let's Hello, go. Hello, friends. My name is Hi. JJ. So let me Hi, show JJ. you a photo that one of my European friends sent me the other day. It's of the American food section of his local supermarket. Taste of America. Bro, half of that stuff looked like the Asian sent corner. Sent me the other day. What? It's of the the American. Never mind, I take it back. That was only on first glance. Mm -mm. Looks like your average store here. To be fair, we have all of this. We have all of this apart from the uh, from the A1 sauce. We don't have A1 sauce, from what I know. But like most of this, looks like you can just get it in a freaking. A uh, supermarket here. Like, this looks like your average supermarket over here, to be fair. American food section of his local supermarket. I forget what country, but I've been to Europe enough times to know that sections like this are common all over the continent. Mm, we do have American weeks. We do have American weeks. And Lido, for example. We do have American weeks, and then they sell, like, pancake, batter... Um, brownies, um, burger sauce, um, <clears throat> stuff like that. Even though the resolution isn't that great, if you're from America, I'm sure you can make out a few products. We got goldfish, airheads, pop tarts, A1 oh, sauce, gluten free hazelnut coffee. Gluten free? What the? We made. Now, the question would be whether this is actually this an so accurate portrayal of like American no! food or simply a heavily exoticized one. Exoticism is a term used to describe the tendency of thinking of foreign cultures only in terms of how they differ from your own. This then leads to the habit of wrongly assuming that the weirder some foreign thing is, the more culturally traditional it must surely be. So in this case, obviously Americans don't actually eat things like Oreo cereal or spreadable marshmallow fluff. Bro, I remember I had spreadable marshmallow fluff as a kid. Like, we had this somewhere. I, I can't find this in any stores anymore. I cannot find this in any stores anymore. I need to get this. I miss this. I want to try this again. I tried this once because my friend brought it to, like, breakfast hours for class. <sighs> I would need it. It isn't that common. We have Asian corner American stuff. Uh, with the other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asian corners are more common, I would say, too. Why does it look bad for your health? Because it is. Because it is bad for your health, but it's good for your height. <laughs> All that much. But they're nevertheless marketed as being super American because such products fit a certain European stereotype of Americans as a people who eat all of this decadent, high-sugar nonsense. I never had a Pop-Tart. I want to try Pop-Tarts, man. I do want to try Pop-Tarts. You think I can find Pop-Tarts on Throne? I should put some Pop-Tarts on Throne. That said, Americans are of course just as guilty of doing this as anyone. Many supermarkets over here have the so-called World Food section, featuring imported products from other countries, often presented in some equally exoticized display. Ooh, yeah, here in Germany, here in Germany, the most common corner you find in supermarkets is like the Asian corner. Like that's huge. We have like so much Insta ramen and so much soy sauce there. Uh, but usually like American is like usually like a promo a week. But most of the American stuff that they sell then you can find here on a daily basis anyway. Exoticizing goes hand in hand with the other phenomenon we talked about the other week, authenticity. This is basically when you use a bunch of stereotypes of some foreign place to come up with a- I'm afraid the Pop-Tarts are going to turn to powder by the time it gets to you. I don't know about that. The product or tradition that you then inaccurately present as being some normal part of their culture. Chinese fortune cookies, which are not oh, actually a thing cookies. in China, but play into a certain... Wait. Wait. 
Wait, what? Exotic stereotype of the Chinese as mysterious fortune tellers would be a classic example. Anyway, today Wait, I thought what? we would look at a few examples of authentic American tradition. Fortune cookies are fake. <laughs> My life has been a lie. Traditions, as practiced by non-Americans over in the world, and see what they can teach us about some of the interesting. Fortune cookies are American made in California. My life has been a lie. Ways that Americans continue to be exoticized. So I lived in Japan briefly, and while I was oh, there, I was sick. able to see perhaps one of the world's most infamous authentic American traditions up close: fried chicken on Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah, Japan, like, oh my God, Japan really got Japan really got played by KFC, man. Japan really got played by KFC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> honestly. I don't even blame them. KFC is hella good. At least here. I don't know how KFC is in America. I don't know how KFC is in America, but here in Europe, KFC is good. Good! So Christmas is a pretty weird holiday for the Japanese to be celebrating in the first place, given it is not remotely a Christian country. But they do, and in a mostly superficial way that focuses on things like decorations and foods, above even things like family or presents. And a lot of this superficiality, in turn, is heavily filtered through assumptions of what Americans do. And apparently the Japanese have been convinced that eating fried chicken, especially <laughs> KFC fried chicken, I don't know. I, <laughs> I I feel like that is so wholesome. Like I know it's just extreme heavy marketing, but I it's so wholesome to me that the Japanese fly, uh, love their KFC. I don't know what it is. I think it's so wholesome. It's the traditional American thing. <laughs> When you're in Japan around Christmas time, you will see big ads for special fried chicken Christmas combo deals all over the place. And a lot of Japanese kids will look forward to having a big KFC feast on December 25th. This authentic tradition was supposedly the idea of just one man, Takashi Okawara, who ran the first Japanese KFC franchise and claims to have made up well, the damn. Christmas thing as a marketing gimmick in the 1970s. And after a few years, KFC for Christmas starts to get popular in Japan. And NHK, which is a national broadcaster, comes in to interview Mr. Okawara, and they want to know if KFC is an American Christmas tradition. You are selling Kentucky Fried Chicken so well in Christmas, and is the common custom in overseas? <laughs> and I would, ooh, uh, <laughs> I, I know that there people are not eating chicken, they're eating turkey. But I said, yes, <laughs> it was lie. <laughs> <laughs> I still regret that. I found. Oh my God. <laughs> One small lie. One small lie changed the course for Japan. One small lie. A lot of Japanese people were quite shocked when I told them that no one in America actually eats fried chicken on Christmas, and that if anything, eating fast food on Christmas would be considered a fairly trashy thing in American culture. But then again, I'm sure that a lot of Americans would also be shocked to learn that Japanese people do not eat sushi with rice on the outside. Speaking of fast food, another Wait, wild photo. Wait, what? Come again? What? In, in American culture. But then again, I'm sure that a lot of Americans would also be shocked to learn that Japanese people do not eat sushi with rice on the outside. Oh yeah, those are uh, called California rolls, right? I mean, they're called California rolls for a reason. They're called California rolls for a reason, I mean, come on. No more panettone during x -Max. I, uh, I don't know what panettone is. That is outside, actually. Yes, I meant outside. If I said inside, I meant outside. And I'm pretty sure he meant outside too. Speaking of fast food, another wild, authentic American thing I have experienced firsthand on my travels is the Dutch practice of eating what they call American style sauce on their french fries. You can buy it at places like McDonald's. Oh, yeah, American style sauce. That's like American burger sauce, right? That's what I mentioned earlier. That's sometimes what they do sell in Lidl here. Where's every Asian snack from my childhood Californian? <laughs> 
California, baby! ...are in big bottles at the store. It's not that bad. Yeah, I think it's ketchup and mayo mix. I think that's it. I would describe it as basically what you would get if you put Mainly mayonnaise mayo. and relish together in the... Ah, it's relish. Blender. And even okay. weirder Dutch food, however, is what they call filet American or American prepari in Belgium, which is a kind of pate what? made of raw ground beef. Dutch people? Do you have this? <laughs> Do you have this, Dutch people? I know I have some Dutch people watching. And often eaten on toast or crackers. There are a lot of theories about how- Yeah, they only call it American sauce because they couldn't get a collab with Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft to McDonald's! What the fuck, MC? <laughs> no, you don't recall this? This weird and possibly dangerous dish became associated with Americans. But when I was there, people told me it was because during the war, there had become this stereotype that American soldiers all ate their steaks super rare. And then the Dutch beef industry just kind of ran with that. That is almost certainly oh. an apocryphal story. Oh. But hey, apocryphal stories are one oh. of the key foundations oh, no. upon which authentic traditions are built. In oh, the comment no. section of my original authentic video, Dude, what is that thing in the middle? Yo, I wanna try that. Yo, what, what's that thing in the middle? It's green, yeah. Shamrock shake? <laughs> Wait, shamrock shake is a thing? You don't want to know, I think. I do want to know. It has... Shrek. Only soft around St. Patrick's Day. Oh, Yeah, I don't think they'd sell tea over in Germany. Mint milkshake. Mint milkshake. Okay, I'm not that big of a fan of mint stuff, to be fair. I wonder how that would taste, though. A bunch of my non-American friends had some fun examples of their own, of various head-scratching things they've seen marketed as being American style in their mm. own countries. For example, some of my British viewers noted that British supermarkets sometimes sell supposed American style hot dogs in- What- what makes the hot dogs American style? What the fuck makes the hot dog American style? Ha! Jars of brine? Load up on that big stateside flavor, proclaims this ad. But in hot dogs. <laughs> it tastes like freedom! Fucking tastes like freedom! Can't hot dogs. We do have um, hot dogs and brine over here too, but we don't call it American. That's just a standard thing. That we literally have sausages in, in jars like this. Standard to buy. You can just buy this. But, yeah, they taste like freedom. Ryan, load up on that big stateside flavor, proclaims this ad. But if hot dogs in jars of brine are too weird for you, they do also sell them in cans of... Oh, that one. Oh, it's also in brine. <laughs> Does it come with the patty? <laughs> Does it come with a patty? Brine as well. Hot dogs are, of course, one of the great exoticized symbols of American cuisine in much I love of the world. Hot dogs. And as a result, I slapping hot, hot dogs, dogs on something is always a surefire way to market it. Are hot dogs American? I know that hamburger is actually German. Hot dogs probably aren't American either, are they? Hmm. And set here in Italy, a lot of. Modern Italian dishes are actually more American than the average Italian person think due to Italian immigrants in the USA. Oh, they're from Frankfurt, I think. Frankfurter. Mm. Yeah, Frankfurter sausages exist. I do remember that. It is being American style. For example, in a lot of places, pizzas with hot dogs on them are presented as being American style pizzas. Either sliced up oh, hot yeah. dogs. And <laughs> I... I've had hot dog pizza. I like hot dog pizza. <laughs> I've... <laughs> and anyone in here had this? I've, I've had this. I like it. I like it. It's good. Nutella pizza, what the hell? <laughs> I, I, I like it. I also had a burger pizza before. I, 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 I do like it too.
as in this German pizza or in Oh, it is literally German. Yeah, I didn't even see no Amerikanische Art. Oh my god, it is German. Ah. Entire wieners as in this one from South Korea. In Italy, meanwhile. Wait, what the fuck? That's an entire so, sausage. Or entire what? wieners. <laughs> That's a question mark. As in this one from South Korea. In Italy, meanwhile, a American pizza is apparently one with bits of hot dog and french fries. In Brazil... Ew! Don't put fries on the pizza. That's, that's too much. That is too much. That is too much. Bro, my ex liked fucking fried potatoes on pizza. Like, ugh. Ugh. Too much. Too much. Too much. Ew, 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 ew. Sell allegedly California style pizza with pineapple, figs, plums, and those bright red cherries there. Uh, that's. I do like myself some pineapple and pizza, but this is too much. What are figs? Wait, I need to translate figs. What are figs? Figs, figs, figs. Figs, Deutsch. Feigen. Was ist eine Feige? Was ist eine Feige? Uh huh. I never had that. Never had a fig. Never had a fig. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know what it tastes like. What does anyone here had a fig? You know what it tastes like? What it tastes like? Pineapple on pizza with barbecue sauce instead of tomato sauce is amazing. I never had pineapple pizza with barbecue sauce. Oh, maybe I should try that. I have a fig plant. They are nice, but not for pizza. They are aggressively mad. Are they sweet? Fig is very sweet. Okay, they're sweet. Okay. Sweet and chewy. What else did he put on the pizza here? California style pizza with pineapple, figs, plums. Plums? Pflaumen, right? What the f- That's just dessert. Bro, that's just dessert at this and point. And those bright red cherries they sell in cans. That's too much. Bro. What the fuck? Bro, not even me as a pineapple pizza enjoyer. Are those cranberries? No, those are cherries. Cherries. Though nothing can top this story from my friend. Also, uh, speaking of Californian sell pizza and shit, uh, McDonald's and other restaurants here sell like cheesecake slices New York style. Because we have um, traditional cheesecake over here in Germany, which is a thousand times better than New York cheese uh, cake. Well, in the New York cheesecake, they just like crumble up some freaking um, crackers and use it as the bottom. Here in Germany, we actually have a proper cake base. So good, so good. Deep dish pizza? I don't think I have. I don't think I have that. No. Daniel, my friend was doing graduate work in Poland and went out to eat and saw American pizza on the menu. When she ordered it, it came out as a plain cheese pizza and the guy brought a can of creamed corn and poured it directly onto the pizza. Creamed corn? What the hell is creamed corn? Creamed corn? Rammeis? It's literally corn and cream? Corn puree? They all don't have cream corn? No! Never heard of this! First time I'm hearing, just look up a picture, I'm looking at, at it! That could easily be, be mistaken as fucking vomit! What the fuck? It's good AF? Huh! I'm open to try, I love corn i love corn but he's about to put it on the pizza uh, right there at the table many americans who had lived or traveled abroad were equally keen to regale me with horror stories about what other countries seem to think a traditional american style breakfast entails among other things they described being served breakfasts that included stuff like baked beans garlic bread baked beans is a british thing 
Huh? That's a that's a British thing. Wait. But other countries seem to think a traditional American-style breakfast entails. Among other things, they described being served breakfasts that included stuff like baked beans. Like bacon? Yes. Eggs? Yes. Pancakes? Yes. What baked beans? Americans used to be British? Well, used to be! Only the British eat baked beans for breakfast, though. Garlic bread, potato salad, and of course... Potato salad sounds very German, though. Hot dogs. But of course. <laughs> Where are the pancakes? One guy even complained about being served green orange juice in China. Green orange China. juice? Talking of Asia, many of my Asian friends told me about a dish that is apparently common in many Asian countries known as American mm. fried rice. Yo, I'd eat that. That looks good. I'd eat that. This evidently consists of rice cooked so with good. ketchup, corn, and raisins, accompanied by. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I hate raisins. I hate raisins. I hate raisins too much. Ah! Raisins? I no. 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 Ugh side of various stereotypical American delicacies like hot dogs, slices of bologna, fried eggs, and chicken nuggets. Hey! The nuggies! Plus more ketchup. But my favorite story of a authentic American dish comes from my friend Camilo in Colombia. In Colombia, we have American-style hot dogs, which are enormous hot dogs with a chorizo wiener topped with melted cheese. Cr chorizo wieners are so good. Ugh. Why are we watching a food video while I'm dieting? Why did you guys recommend me a food video while I told you guys I'm dieting? Fuck you guys. <laughs> Tumbled potato chips, various sauces, and quail eggs. I was able quail to eggs. verify this with a photo. Camilo. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. That looks like an abomination. Chorizo sausage, hella good, but this? Looks like an abomination. Holy mother. Camilo continues. We named it that because of a common belief in Latin America that people in the USA eat big size foods with a lot of toppings and all of that. You can't believe how disappointed <laughs> I was when I tried an actual hot dog in the USA. All right, Damn. now let us do a lightning round of- Maybe the stressing over food will help you shed mad calories. Yeah, 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 yeah. A yeah. few other much beloved, allegedly American foods from around the world. Americaners, which are German cookies <gasps> ah! with black and white icing. I love them! That's true, we call them Americana. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why we call them that. Like, even when we uh, were taught about those in school, we were, uh, my teacher was like, yeah, they actually got nothing to do with America. We just call them that. Okay, thanks, teacher. <laughs> and then we proceeded to make some. And they're so good. Similar but distinct American cakes that the Poles make. Amen. Which are these little doughy lumps with frosted undersides. An American sandwich or a pan American, which is some sort French? of beef and french fries. That looks good, though. Yo, that looks good. That looks good. I have extended family in Latin America and they were surprised about so many of our foods. Damn. I had those cakes. They are perfect. Not too sweet and not too dry. Noise. Those fries look kind of sad. I. The bottom ones, maybe. But the top ones are okay. They look like McDonald's fries, per personally thinking. Sandwich that they sell in France. American salad, which is a mm -hmm. kind of mayonnaise and carrot salad sold in. Huh? Spain? Huh? So it's like... Um... Coleslaw from Wish? And American dressing, a creamy sauce that the Swedes eat that's made of pickles, mayonnaise, and hot sauce. That sounds good. Bro, that sounds actually good. And sold in tubes. Now available That actually in sounds so good. Flavor. But fauxthentic yeah! Americana... Even better! Uh, it's not just limited to food, of course. A number of my foreign friends were eager to inform me that these things, That's amazing. which I guess hey. we would call red oh, solo cups. cups, are a subject of considerable fascination in other parts of the world, where they are often sold as glamorous American party cups. I love this copy from I... this. 
I don't think I've seen that over here. British online store. Everything about these disposable red American party cups says party. Whether you're planning a barbecue or <laughs> no a wild way, night man. of beer pong and American no pop way. music, these red party cups are the perfect disposable option. Instantly recognizable from a number of American films, such as the American Pie series <gasps> no! and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, these disposable cups are durable enough for even the wildest of parties. In Brazil, <laughs> however, That's they so call funny. a cup that looks like this and that looks hella fancy. American cup. <laughs> Why is this an American cup? <laughs> what? Brazilians also call placemats American sets. This true? <laughs> this true? For some reason, they have a similar situation in Italy, where a placemat is known as an American... I have no explanation for that. <laughs> Okay. Tablecloth. Are placemats really that American of a thing? My friend Marcelo, meanwhile, tells me this story. I visited Chile one time, and they have stores out there called American stores. These stores are actually just thrift stores, but they call them that because they mostly have American types of clothing, such as American football jerseys, American brands, American. I was about to ask, what the hell is American, like, Clothing. College shirts, etc. It was pretty funny, to be honest. This reminds me of another wild story I can tell you from my time in Japan. There was this neighborhood in Tokyo called Harajuku that was known for having a lot of cool hipster fashion stores. And they would have mm -hmm. these American fashion stores where they would sell like Tommy Hilfiger and Supreme <laughs> and all of that. But in order to have the oh full God. American experience, they would employ these big black guys wearing, you know, do rags and chains and basketball <laughs> jerseys to stand out front of the stores and no. beckon the Japanese. Japanese people to come in, but these no guys were not way. actually African American, but rather literal African immigrants from places like Senegal or Ghana, who I assume were much cheaper to hire. Oh and they would be trying God. to lure you into these stores with their cool American hip hop slang, but spoken oh through these God. thick African accents from people who, in many cases, clearly barely understood English. Now, in is Russia, so there is nothing the kids love more than heading down to the old theme park and riding the American slide, which is what they call roller coaster. They call roller coasters American slide. Okay. Okay. We over here in Germany call a, a roller coaster um, Achterbahn. Thanks for the follow, Miss Venom. Um, and Achterbahn is um, because the number acht, which means eight, because it does loops like an eight. <laughs> Achterbahn! Yeah! The Great American Slide! <laughs> Same in Belgium. We call it Wave Tracks. Wave Tracks also makes sense, I guess. Achterbahn! There's over there, which is kind of ironic since in a lot of other European countries they call roller coasters Russian Mountains. Russian Mountains, from what I remember, is a very specific kind of, um, roller coaster if i'm not mistaken like if i'm not mistaken it's a very specific kind of roller coaster it's the same in brazil damn i don't want to say it in hungarian but because the chat is in english uh. i think the roller coaster name is a relic from old war era maybe but i i'm i'm sure i remember like at some festivals uh there being an Achterbahn that's called Russian Mountain. And the historians seem to agree that they were actually invented in Russia as well. But still, I'm sure Americans would much rather be associated with roller coasters than brass knuckles, or as the French call them, American fists. Or how about <laughs> duct tape, which is called American tape in Spain. Spain, what the hell? <laughs> American tape. Why is it American? <laughs> American tape, that's good. That's All right, good. now let us close with a really good summary of what is perhaps one of the best examples of a faux authentic American phenomenon that wound up going mainstream in America itself. My friend Christopher oh. writes, I think one example of something that is a product of a foreign country's idea of American culture that America kind of reappropriated for itself is the spaghetti Western film genre. As the name what? suggests, the genre originated in Italy as Italian filmmakers made movies 
movie is based on oh. a largely mythical understanding of the American West. American filmmakers oh. then began to import the style in their own films about the American West, and it proved very popular among American film goers, even if its representation oh, of the damn. Wild West is only very loosely based on the truth. A very recent film that utilizes a lot of these spaghetti western tropes is the Quentin Tarantino film Django Unchained. The term spaghetti western is itself also quite interesting because, as we discussed in the previous video, spaghetti has become one of the most Americanized Italian Spain, foods in the um... US. So there is something wonderfully poetic and circular about using the name of an Americanized Italian food to describe Italianized American history. So I hope you enjoyed these two deep dives into the exciting world of authentic culture. If you have any ideas of how I could stretch out this premise any further, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check out the first video if you haven't already, and I will see you next week. That was a good video. Thanks for recommending. <laughs> I am sad to know that um, fortune cookies are not actually Chinese. I'm sad to have learned that. So for that one, I say fuck a yo. But thanks for watching, little. Thank you. Goodbye.